everybody and welcome to part 8 in this Gmail Duo tutorial series. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at hooks. Um, so as usual you want to open up your garage mod. Uh, you're also going to want to open up your sublime with the Lua file that we're working in. Now I'm going to give you the best description I can of a hook. Um, so basically a hook is a certain event or something happens on a particular event. That event could be a player respawning a player typing a message, uh, the server starting up, all these different kinds of things. And on these specific events, you, you can make certain code execute in theory. So let's go ahead and I'll show you straight up an example just because it might be a little bit easier. I'll do hook.add player say. Then this, this is gonna, going to be a unique name. And then we're going to go ahead and do this. This may look a bit confusing at first. But then here I'm just going to print out um, someone said a message. Now, when I run this script, I'll go ahead and run it. I'll do lua underscore open script. But I'm going to run this on the server because player say is a server side hook. I'll explain how we can tell which hooks are server and client in a minute. But let's go ahead and run this test.lua. And as you can see, immediately nothing happens. But if I type a message in my console, it says that someone said a message because I did which means that this function here, which looks a bit weird now, um, went ahead and executed whenever the player say hook was called. Now, this type of function here, this is called an anonymous function, and it's a function without a name. Now, you can do this. A lot of people will get a little bit confused at this, but it is possible to create a function and not name it, because um, a function is a data type. So let's say, I'll just give you a quick explanation of that. Let's say I made a variable called test, and I set it equal to um, function like this, I put an end to it and the function was just going to print lol. Now I can call that function by using the variable, just like that. that that's going to go ahead and call this function here. So this function exists, it just doesn't have a name, but it's stored inside of the test variable so we can call it from the test variable. That's kind of what happens here. Instead of putting in the name of the function, we put the function directly inside the parameters. Now if we wanted to, we could go ahead and make a function and call it testing. Whoops, testing. And instead of putting this whole function, we'll go ahead and we'll put this inside of here, like so. Whoops, there we go. And we're gonna get rid of all this now, and we're just gonna simply type our function name. Now, a lot of people get confused about the brackets. When you reference a function, don't use brackets. Only if you're calling a function, do you use the brackets. So this is just telling the hook that this is the function that we wanna call on this event. And the function will call. So let's let's take a look at this more in depth now. Player say is the type of hook. Now there are many types of hooks, and player say is the one that we're using. The second parameter, now this just saying this first one has to be the exact name of what the hook is, otherwise it will never get called. The second one, which is a unique name, is anything you want, it's how you're gonna refer to this hook if you want to remove it. Basically, just, just put whatever you want there, make sure it makes sense to you, and try not to name it the same as anything else, because otherwise a hook might override another hook. Then the last parameter is the function that you want to call when this hook executes. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go on my other screen, and I'm going to bring up the Gmod wiki here, and I'm going to search player, whoops, player say, which is what we used, if you remember. And you can see here under the hook section, it says GM colon play and say. Now, the GM colon means that it's part of the game mode functions. Don't worry about this, just worry purely about this part. This is the name of the hook. Okay? Now, the description of this says called when a player dispatches a chat message for the client equivalent, see on player chat. Now, we could do this on the client, but we're doing this on the server right now. Now, if you notice, it comes up with some parameters the sender, the text, and team chat. And as you can see here, the sender is the player which sent the message, the text is the message's content, and the team chat is whether or not it was team chat. That's true or false. Now, let's go ahead and, and take a look at more in depth of this. These parameters can be received, in a sense, from the hook. So here we could do PLY, then we could do text, and then we could do team. Now... These can be named whatever you want because they're just variable names, but they will get given the data in the same order that it is here. Now, because we link the function testing up to the player say hook and the player say passes three parameters, sender, text, and team chat, when our function gets called, those parameters are going to be passed. So the player or the sender 
the text and whether it was team chat. So when this happens, we're just simply going to go ahead and type uh, PLY colon kill, which if you watched the previous videos, you should know that that's how we kill a player. So we're going to kill the player that sent the message. Now we're going to rerun our script and I'm going to type a message. And as you can see, I got killed for it. But let's take this a step further. How about I wanted to check if the text is equal to exclamation mark kill. Then if that's the case, then I will kill the player. So this will only execute if I type that. So if I go ahead and just type anything in here, as you can see, nothing is happening. But if I type exclamation mark kill, it then kills me. So I hope that kind of makes sense. But let's take a look at some more hooks. So if you're wondering uh, about hooks, the main hooks that you're going to be in is this. Just go into the wiki, go to the hooks, go to GM. This is going to be all of the hooks that you'll mainly be using. Now, some of these hooks uh, include all sorts, such as um, Fizgun. Did I spell that wrong? Yes, I did. Fizz. Sorry, that's Fizgun. There you go. So there's two here, Fizgun Drop and Fizgun Pickup. Let's take a look at Fizgun Pickup. And this is called whenever a player picks up an entity with a Fizgun. Now this is client and server, so we can do this on both, but we're gonna do this on server side. I'll show you why in a minute. So what we're gonna do is copy the name, put it here. And then we're gonna take a look. The, the two parameters are the player and the entity. So we're gonna change our parameters. So we want the player and the ent. Now what we can do is we could just simply say ent.setColor. And we can set its color to a color of, I don't know, green. So now when I go ahead and save this, I'm going to go ahead and rerun my script, as you can see. And I'm going to spawn in some props, uh, which is nothing special. These are just normal props as usual. But now if I try and pick these up, as you can see, they turn green when I pick them up. Because that hook is called and that code is being executed. Now again, if you're a little bit confused, let's go back to the wiki page and take a look here. It says that... The description of this is called whenever a player picks up an entity with a fizzgun. The arguments are the player that is picking up the uh, the player that is picking up using the fizzgun, and the entity that is being picked up. So by using these two, we know that this is the player that is picking up this entity. So we could just simply change the color of that entity. Now I hope that makes sense to you. There's there's many of hooks. One of them is is think GM think. This gets called every frame. So we'll have a look at that last one. We'll do think. We'll do three variables here. Local r equals math dot random two five. Oops, one and two five five. There we go. We're gonna do this three times now, like this. We're gonna rename these r, g, and b. Then we're gonna do a four k v in pairs loop, and this time we're gonna do ents dot get all, which if you remember is how you get a table of all of the entities in the server. And we're simply gonna do v dot set color, and the color is gonna be a color of RGB, which is these three variables we made here that we're going to have to move inside of here. Otherwise, it won't work. Um, so now you can see that what we're going to do is think gets called every single frame and think doesn't pass any parameters. Now, what we do is every frame we loop through all of the entities, we generate three random values, we make a color out of that value and then set the entity to that. And we do that for all of the entities every frame. Now, I don't suggest doing this because it may lag your game, but as you can see now, I don't know how well the video is picking it up, but the, everything is flashing random colors. And the worst part about this is if we just quickly pop into the color room, as you can see, it's a nightmare in there. So yeah, I hope you learned something guys, and I guess I will see you all in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching guys.